Hello, welcome to the eNet Employer how-to video series. Today we're going to talk about electronic fund transfers, also referred to as direct deposit, and how to perform them in the eNet Employer program. There are a number of steps that you need to perform before you create the actual EFT file. This involves entering bank information for both your company and for the employees that are going to be paid via EFT. And the second step involves calculating and closing the payroll before any EFT file can be created. So let's get started by logging into the program. Choosing the payroll service. And at this point we'll go to the payroll tab, current payroll, and the EFT command. The EFT process simply defined is taking funds from the company's financial institution and transferring them separately into each employee's bank. The EFT screen we're on now is where we enter the company's financial information, including the name of the bank, the account information, and we also have to make sure that the EFT feature is enabled. If you've not yet entered your company's financial information, you can do so by visiting this screen and choosing the new button which will insert a row into the table. And then you can edit each of the cells as you need. Once you've completed editing the cells, you can save the row and the company's financial information is complete. So now we can proceed to the next step and enter the bank information for each of the employees. We do that by choosing the employee menu and the bank accounts command. If you're using the EFT feature to pay your employees, you can distribute the funds for each employee in up to three different bank accounts. Our sample payroll shows that most of the employees will be using the EFT feature. As you can see under the Enable column, the Yes appears, all except for one, Crystal Whitman. Since she doesn't have the EFT feature enabled for her, she'll be paid via regular check or some other method. You'll notice that each of the rows in the table are shown in a green color. This indicates that there are one or more sub-rows that can be displayed for each row. By selecting the Expand button, at the left side of the table. With the rows expanded for the first two employees, we can see that Gregory House has two banks that will be enabled for a CFT procedure, RBC and Scotiabank. And our second employee, Josephine Webster, will only have one bank, CN Credit Union. If we wish to enter a secondary bank for Josephine Webster, we would just move to the secondary row, double click, and then edit the information as we need. We would also have to enable the bank by choosing the checkbox under the Enable column. Each bank row also includes a maximum amount cell. This cell is used to define the maximum amount of funds that can be placed into the account during the EFT procedure. In this particular case, Gregory House has $500 set for his RBC bank, $300 for his Scotia bank, and any remaining funds that he is to be paid this pay period will be issued to him as a printed check. And in the case of Josephine Webster, you can see that she has $0 entered as the max amount. This indicates that the entire amount of her pay will be deposited into the CN Credit Union account for her. With our banking information now completed for each employee, let's move to the Payroll Processing menu and choose the Calculations command. As mentioned at the beginning of the EFT video, the EFT process can only be run on a payroll that is closed. So let's do that. Let's calculate the pay. And like we do before closing any payroll, we perform a payroll backup. Once our backup is complete, we can now close the pay. And now the final step, creating the EFT file itself, is performed under the Payroll Processing Menu, Reports command. As you can see, we have a number of reports already on the screen. 
One of them is called Generate EFTs. If you do not see the Generate EFTs report row, simply choose it from the list at the top of the screen and click the New button. The payroll cell shows us the last payroll that was actually closed, so we're ready to go. Let's click the Generate Report button and the EFT file will be generated. For this demo, we're using the Google Chrome browser, so if we choose the Show and Folder command, we can see the EFT file created right on the screen. The file shown here can now be transmitted to your bank for final processing. This completes a video on how to create an EFT file in an employer. We hope you found it useful and ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel for other useful Enid Employer videos. Have a great day!